Hello, I've got something pretty special today. This is not a haunted doll inside of a coffin. This is actually a very rare instrument that I ordered in from Germany. I actually won this in an auction, so I'm very excited to share this with you today. Now, it's currently not playable, so don't get your hopes up, but I will share the process of fixing it up. So before I did any work on this instrument, I wanted to share uh, what it was like just out of the box. Let's go ahead and open up this bad boy. And this is a table violin. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy out of the case. Very carefully. Uh, I quite like this uh, case. I think it's quite interesting. Now this instrument is from the mid to late 1800s. This particular one is most likely from around 1880 or so. You can see it has seen much better days. It's, it's had a tough life. Uh, the case itself is quite damaged. The top is warped, so it doesn't close all the way. It's going to be a tough dog job trying to fix that and get it to stay uh, back in a flat shape, but we'll see what we can do about that. Now, the main thing that's wrong with this, and I want it in the auction at a, a pr pretty reasonable price, uh, and these are extremely rare as well, is that the fretboard has come off of the body. So I will want to clean that up very carefully and completely using um, some sandpaper and I'll glue that fretboard back on and I'll share uh, the instrument. Uh, it's very hard to find videos of these instruments and they're extremely rare. I didn't think I would ever be able to get my hands on one much less see one in person so I actually stayed up till 4 a.m. one night in order to win this auction. You can see there are two sound holes here in the shape of teardrops or water drops or sad face drops. What's interesting about instruments uh, from this era, particularly from Germany, if they are table instruments or zither instruments, is they tend to have these needles right there. Now, I wouldn't put that on my timber table, but I suspect if you had a table that was just for playing instruments on that you didn't mind having some holes punched in, uh, that is how you would transmit um, or transfer vibrations from the instrument to that top, and it would amplify your uh, volume of the instrument and it really uh, adds some depth uh, to the overall tone as you have some interaction between the bottom of the instrument and the vibrating surface that it is on and I think it sounds quite fantastic when you do that. I would like to build a table in the future uh, that also serves as a sound box and it would have holes, sound holes that project the sound forward. So there are three of those. One, two and three. This bridge is a solid piece of wood with a metal cap. I'm not sure what kind of metal. It kind of looks like some sort of galvanized wire, uh, but the bridge uh, does move. It is not fixed. There are pencil markings there to mark where it was in the past, but there, I, there are issues with this. And I may need to carve out a brand new bridge all together. Uh, you can see the pins that hold these strings in place are sort of just nails, really. Uh, they're a little bit stabby. Now I don't want to change too much on this guy. If there's an original part uh, or original design to this, I would like to leave it that way. So uh, you can see how, how dirty the instrument is. I, I cleaned a little bit off here just to see how much would come off. But you can see it's quite rough shape. Uh, it is uh, very dirty, but it is in one piece, <laughs> which uh, it's, it's, it's asking a lot from an instrument from this era. Uh, so what I'll do after this video is I'll clean this up as best I can. I'm going to clean off uh, this surface here and get ready to glue this uh, fretboard uh, back on. I can see the sound post. There's a sound post uh, down here. It's right about here where I'm pointing it. So there's a sound post in there. I'm not sure uh, if there may be one around here. Um, I might, uh, if I can somehow get a small camera in there, if I had a worm camera, to something like that. I wouldn't be able to get a phone camera because my phones are too big, aren't they? Um, so I'm, I, I have no way of seeing what's down there, uh, but I can see there is a sound post here, so if there is one in this area, it should still be in place reasonably. Uh, what is interesting about this sound board, or the, the fret board, is that these frets are quite high. Now, uh, German sithers and concert sithers in particular uh, tend to have uh, high frets like that, and it helps uh, with uh, bending the notes like this. Okay, uh, <laughs> I 
I guess that was out of frame a little. You can see as you as you pluck the note, you can sort of move it uh, like that and get some vibrato. Uh, these are just all metal strings. These are not violin strings, but I will put violin strings on this. As this is an older instrument, I don't want to put uh, full tension on this with metal strings anymore, so I will be using uh, violin strings that uh, would have much less tension than whatever these metal things are. They don't sound very good anyway, they're quite dead. Now the difficulties I'm seeing, uh, if sort of line this up here, uh, is that there's, it, there's barely any clearance for the strings, so I'm going to have to be very careful with that. Um, as you can see, that's, that's buzzing there a little bit. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if, if there's if if it is warped a bit to such a degree that this the strings now don't have enough uh, clearance or the action's too low. I'll have to carve out a new one of these and try to keep it you know as, as close as I can to the original. We'll see how we go. So please check in in the future, and I'll share my progress on restoring this guy. Um, I think he's in fantastic condition for an instrument from the 1800s. Um, I suspect maybe it may have dried out at some point as there are knots uh, here uh, and there is cracking. So uh, I suspect maybe it, it, the wood may be uh, getting dried out a bit. So I, I might uh, get a hygrometer to check um, what this guy's like, what he's all about, and see if, it, if the wood needs to be hydrated just a bit. I think it's quite an interesting and beautiful piece. Um, top is carved, you can, you can feel that, it's just a solid carved piece. It's, I, I think it should sound um, quite interesting. I have played it with the bow, but I had to shift this over a fair bit, and I played it with the bow. And it sounds interesting, but I can tell it's, these strings are dead. They, they don't sound great, um, but once I have this all fixed up, I suspect it will sound very interesting and quite different from a typical violin. So uh, please stay tuned, and if you are interested in seeing more of that, um, click all the YouTube buttons. You take care of yourselves. I'll see you around everyone and please look forward to seeing more of this table violin. I have also ordered in more interesting and rare instruments from uh, Europe, particularly Germany, and I'll be sharing those in the future as well. So please stay tuned. I'll have to do more work on those, but I'll, I'll share some videos before I start working on them. Okay, I'll see you around.